All right, Will, so tell me, car next door, um, you guys have had a huge acceleration of growth. I mean, like 100,000 bookings in October. Um, can you talk me through how your growth has accelerated in the past five years and why you think it's been kind of so drastic and so quick? Well, yeah, so we, we hit 100,000 bookings in October. So uh, we're doing roughly 6,500 bookings a month now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it took us four years to get to 50,000 bookings uh, yeah. and one year to get to 100,000 bookings. So everything that you do in a year, even though it feels like hell at the time and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, you kind of like, it eventually just sort of builds and builds and snowballs. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've, we've basically been able to double everything every year. We haven't been able to go much faster than double because it sort of, you know, starts to get you know, we sort of hit natural, we hit these limits. Yeah. Um, every year, we just get better and better at making our systems more and more efficient. So we've invested a lot of time and energy this year um, into just making it way smoother for us and for the customer okay. to have a to have a booking on the platform. So better user experience kind of thing. You know, more intuitive interface so that people know what to do. Um, but then also, if something does go wrong, make it more efficient for us to fix it yep. so that we don't need to have you know, as many staff fixing issues. Got right. And I mean, d driverless cars, I've been told are gonna be around by like 2030. Mm. What do you think the future of cars and transport more broadly looks like as driverless cars kind of take hold? Driverless cars is going to completely change transport in the same way that um, the, the computer changed everything and the internet and the mobile phone. I think it's the big next thing that's going to happen. Basically, you know, you press a button, a vehicle comes and picks you up, takes you where you want to go, drives yeah. off. That's and, and it's just going to cost so little because um, because there's no driver. Like you're only yeah. paying for the capital cost of the vehicle, and that capital cost is spread out over so many different users because the car's just being used all the time. Mm -hmm. So getting across town um, in a driverless car that comes and picks you up will be cheaper than catching a bus is today, um, for example. But if you also, if you do want to get on a shared, because, because these apps will know where you're going and also where everyone else is going, yep. it can route you on, it can route you with other people at the same time. So, you know, you could be basically paying just a few cents a kilometre to get exactly where you, went, where you want to go, whenever Bloody you want to go. So it's going to be good. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be very good. good. Where I see car next door sort of fitting into all of that. Yeah. There's now, which is everyone driving their own cars, pretty much. Yep. Um, and then there's the future, which is no one driving their own cars and everything's driverless. Yes. There's this journey to get from now to then, and we see car next door as a... Look, basically what we're doing is we're providing people transport as a service yes. now and when driverless cars come, everything will be transport as a service. So we think that we're building up a really great user base of early adopters who are going to be okay. transport as a, as a service users. Yeah. And with Car Next Door, what's been your biggest learning? My fundamental reason for starting Car Next Door is that I wanted to reduce the amount of carbon emissions that humans are putting into the world. I think that you want to be investing in things that you really believe in and that are going to make the world um, better. Yes. For, and not just, not just to make some extra money. Yeah. Although extra money would be good too. That'd be nice. Exactly. A little bit of side hustle. <laughs>